So welcome to this week's episode of Crap No One Tells You. Um, today I have Bob Smurl from Smurl Insurance with me and um gonna have a nice discussion about business insurance and the crap. Everybody's no favorite you. topic. Exactly. So welcome. <laughs> See people's eyes glaze over <laughs> when you say the word insurance. Yeah, I don't I don't think people realize how important it is. But so let me start off with the first question. What is some crap no one tells you about business insurance in general? I think the big thing that, and this is kind of as much struck me this past week as, as anything is that not all insurance is created equal. And so many times I see, you know, everybody wants to be the next Amazon, you know, in their industry. Right. And it's like, great. So you need a new microphone, right? So Amazon is great. You can go on there and look and compare this one to that one and this brand to that brand and, and decide which one is yours and buy it. And you make a mistake. What's the worst that happened? You spent a couple hundred bucks on a microphone and those do exactly what you wanted, <laughs> right. right? And so then you wait and when you can, you buy another one. That's the one that you think is more like what you wanted. But with insurance, you buy the wrong thing. It could cost you oh, yeah. thousands, hundreds of thousands. There's no going back yeah. and, and getting the right yeah. one later. Afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so one of the things, cause, um, I, this was something I found out the hard way is, um, n it's not necessarily the business insurance side, but it's like the workers comp and that end of it. Um, why is it that owners and officers are often excluded from workers comp policies? Cause yeah. I got into a car accident. Right. Driving a company car. We call up workers comp and go, Hey, the owner got into an accident and they were like, well, that goes on your personal insurance. That's yeah. Like, what? Yeah. So can you explain like someone that's starting a contracting business, someone that's starting in that type of industry, like what are some things that they need to be aware of that generally you aren't told when you're starting. Yeah. Up so, so specifically with workers comp, that, that situation is like a blessing and a curse that we were allowed to have that, <laughs> that, and so what happens is, and, and that exactly goes back to my original point, not all insurance is created equal, right? Because what happens is if you are in a corporation, you're allowed to be exclude yourself if you're an owner or an executive or an officer of the corporation. You have to sign a form that does that, but you're allowed to do that. Um, but are you allowed to, or are you forced to? You're not forced to, you're allowed to. Okay. In an LLC, you're automatically excluded unless you put yourself in. And that's kind of the same as with a sole proprietorship. So all that is confusing <laughs> enough, right? But which entity am I in and when do I automatically opt in or opt out? Yeah, you have to follow that and know what you're doing. But what happens so many times is folks, small business owners in particular, see, what's it going to cost? What's, if I exclude it, then my premium will go right. down, right? Okay, I'm going to exclude myself. Yeah, but if something happens. But, yeah, but like somebody like you, what, what, if, what, if you exclude yourself, how much premium are you going to save? I don't know, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, I don't know, 500 bucks. It's like, it's not that much money. If you're, yeah, a contractor. Yeah, maybe it's a couple thousand, but like when I've explained it to some guys, I say, wait a minute, if I get injured, I'll get my medical bills paid for it and I'll get some of my wages covered. Yep. Yeah. It's a no brainer. I want it. Yeah. You know? And so, but it's, yeah, it's all a matter of explaining it. And if you bought it online, you didn't get that explanation. <laughs> that nobody told yeah. you, right? Yeah. So, um, that brings up another interesting thing that, um, I kind of wanted to bring up is. We deal a lot with startups, right? People come to us and say, Hey, I have this idea for a business and I want to do all of these things. And I'm fortunate enough that I know people like you and I've been in business long enough. And my question to them is always the, did you talk to an insurance agent about your business? And they go, why? And I'm like, do you even understand what your liability could potentially do with a business you go in? Right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you an example. I had someone that wanted to be an elder care consultant. It's like a unique niche industry. And she was telling me about the things she wanted to do and all that stuff and things she wanted to advise on. And I go, well, what if someone sues you for a wrongful death suit, even though you may not have had anything to do with it, can you get insurance for that? And she goes, I don't know. I'm like, so you're going to list the service but you don't know if you can be insured for that service. Right. 
So I'm assuming you have a lot of these types of stories yeah. where someone comes yeah. to you and goes, oh yeah, can, can, can I insure this? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's just it. It's like, well, what if you give somebody bad advice? Well, I just won't give bad advice. Okay. <laughs> what if you don't get bad advice, but I think you gave me bad advice. Uh -huh. You know, I always go back to, I had a guy a couple of years ago came to me for coverage and it was employment practices liability. But he said, so, and that's for, you, you know, you did something wrong in the hiring and firing practice of somebody. It's, that's, it's way more than that, mm -hmm. but just simplify it. And he said, they had a case and employees sued them for, for bad act or bad acting. They weren't bad. So that would be they, like a wrongful termination or just bad? Yeah, it could be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, I don't show up for, you know, I don't show up for work every other day. I'm late the days I do show up and then you fire me and I say, Hey, it's because you don't like old guys. You know, that's why you right. hired me. No, it's cause I wasn't showing up for work. That's the problem. Right. But so I hire an attorney and we try and sue you and. So this guy is saying, okay, I won the case. We did everything right. This guy deserved to be terminated. However, I got a bill from my attorney for $23,000. Right. Why don't I feel like I won? <laughs> right. Yeah. But that's what insurance covers. You know, they defend you yeah. in a situation like that. If he had employment practices, liability insurance, they would have defended him in that case. And he would not necessarily have paid $23,000 <laughs> for the attorney fees. to defend it. Right. Yeah. And that's the, that's the same thing as like that person, you know, it's a elder care. Okay. Well, you gave somebody the wrong advice and they thought that meant, and now it doesn't. And wait, that's all your fault. Right. So, so I don't think a lot of startups, especially understand the need to really have an in-depth conversation with a, um, business insurance person. Yeah. And not to knock insurance companies, but I have found in mine as a business owner, treading lightly, <laughs> tre treading very lightly, <laughs> um, is that some of these larger corporations that deal with you primarily over the phone or online aren't always the best suited to give you proper advice. So can you tell me a little bit about, don't have to. But like broad strokes, what's the difference between going with like a national insurance agency that you find online versus going with a local agent like you that represents multiple companies? Yeah. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. I had somebody it, it, just in the last couple of weeks came to me and she went to one of the larger insurance companies that we deal with, but they have a direct to consumer, direct to business, uh, portal on their website. So she went in and bought her, you didn't buy it, but quoted her insurance for her business. She hasn't had business insurance before. She checked all the boxes, said, look, I got this. I want this. Just put it into effect. This is what I need. Well, I sat and had a conversation with her and she was getting a little upset with me because I was asking too many questions. And I was like, why heaven, do you need to heaven forbid? <laughs> right. Why do you need to know all this stuff? And I said, can you send me the insurance section of this new contract that you have, because that's why she's checking all the certain boxes that she needs, thinks she needs. And oh, I said, let me see the, well, I, I don't know if I want to send you the contract. I'm like, I don't want to see the whole contract. Just send me the insurance requirements because then we know we've met those requirements and bought the right policy. We don't want to buy the policy that doesn't fit. Okay. She sent it over. Well, she had checked the box. That, it didn't fit with what she needed. <laughs> so she would have been so, in breach of contract yeah, by default. Because yeah. she didn't, uh, and she would have wasted money on coverages that weren't covering her and weren't satisfying the contract. And right. so, yeah, I, and that's the difference is so many times I see that where somebody says, Hey, I went online, I got this quote and you know, it's X dollars lower than what you're talking about. Right. But it's, it's like, well, wrong yeah, coverage. but look, you took out this and this and this because you know, the online portal didn't explain those coverages to you, or, you know, you just saw a premium next to them. And so, so when you're starting your business uh, or even when you've been in business for a while, how frequently should I be talking to my insurance agent? Like, should I be calling you every three months, six months? Should I call you if there's a major contract change, if I add a new, like, yeah, it really depends on like some, some of my clients I can, we could do with once a year. Okay. You know, we have a renewal discussion and it's because they're consistent. I have other folks that are, you know, their business changes all the time. Maybe there's somebody that changes all the time. And I, 
And I hit them with quarterly follow-ups to say, you know, I have a trigger in my system that says, Hey, you know, call this guy. It's, you know, it's been three months. So, so I'll just shoot him an email and say, what about this? What about that? And we have a conversation. So as the business owner, um, if I don't have an insurance guy that actually follows up, how would I know what action I'm taking or what changes I'm making in my business should trigger me to actually call the insurance agent? Too often it's after you got hurt, <laughs> right? Because you got to think, oh, what did so, on your workers come for? <laughs> you found out that something, but is I think it's definitely whenever you're making a change, you're you're buying a new vehicle, you're hiring a new employee, you're letting an employee go, you're moving your location, you're renewing your lease, you're expanding your your um, office space, whatever, anything like that. That's when you should have a conversation. So basically, any changes you make that are materially significant yeah like that because what's the that worst that can happen i'd say hey that's not gonna that's not gonna affect your insurance have fun right go yeah yeah it was like when we split into two buildings and i had to call someone and i was like does this change my insurance and like well yeah because yeah you no longer have people walking into one and you know the two got fully separated so in, right. in our case and i've had that where somebody forgot to call me and now now the new location isn't covered like, oops. <laughs> oops. Yeah. yeah. Someone falls walking yeah. in your door. Like, exactly. I hope, hope nobody comes can, in there. Can, can we drag him to the other location? <laughs> <Where>? Yes. <laughs> so, but it, it, it was, it's interesting talking about not being covered or wrong coverages. It's, um, a buddy of mine, uh, worked for a company, let's call them a contractor that generally works on the ground, right? So. They do stuff that doesn't require them to go up to heights. Right. Well, the contractor was slow during a period of time and decided that they were going to go work on a roof for a client. My buddy fell off the roof. Nice. Broke his neck. Didn't die, but broke his neck. So you as a worker, because we're going to assume that we have some workers too. Um, should you be somewhat aware of what type of business policy the business you work for has in place that covers you? Oh, I, I, I think definitely you should know that. And particularly like that situation is workers' compensation, you know, making sure that, that the company that you're working for has workers' compensation. Cause there are, there are cases like where, especially with contractors where, um, you know, going up on a roof they're not covered from certain insurance perspectives, right? Yeah. And, and maybe the situation is too, that, okay, you know, with workers' compensation laws, you're covered somehow, but again, it's like, you know, going back to that guy, why don't I feel like I won? You know, I mean, do you really want a law, a lawsuit to, you know, and a legal battle for the next 10 years to find out whether you won or not and whether right. you got, and in the meantime, you've had all these expenses and lost wages and. Yeah. So, so, um, it's good to know, like, Hey, I, and, and a lot of times too, contractors in, in they're notorious for, no, I'm going to hire you as a 1099. And that's not clear between you and I, whether I'm a subcontractor or an employee. And that and pays they, your insurance requirements as a subcontractor. Yes. Yes. Do you then have to pay your own workers comp? Do you like how? Maybe. Maybe what's the, so situation? it's not even a straight yeah. answer. Yeah. What's the right. situation? Okay. Yeah. And do I have, you know, if I have my own employees, then absolutely. If I don't, then maybe I'll even struggle to get it. Or maybe our contract between you and I says that I need to provide my own workers comp. So it, it, like every situation is different. And, but most of the time, <laughs> the parties, the parties don't have the same idea of what their Correct. arrangement is. Nor do they communicate or actually yeah. read the contract. Yeah. So me and my business attorney, um, play the game called, how can they sue you all the time? <laughs> so we read for a contract. A good game <laughs> for business. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a very interesting game yeah. to play. Right. And sometimes we'll bring guest speakers in to like, how can I sue yeah. you the game? And, um, what struck me was a lot of times the business attorney's answer was, well, they may be able to but you might be able to insure yourself for that. Right. So it's like, it's like you're playing this constant right. game of risk, right? right? Like what can I put in a contract? What should I put in a contract? What can I insure myself for? What could be like, what could go wrong? Right. And right. you're really in the business of when something goes wrong, right? Cause I don't care how long you've been in business, what you do, 
you are going to have something go wrong at some point. Like we had a water heater that we didn't even know existed in the top of our ceiling in our print shop. Yeah. Started leaking on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And it leaked for the entire weekend and it was mere inches away from destroying a hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment. Yeah. Right. When that happened, all of a sudden I went, oh crap, what would have happened if the machine was six inches closer and it was covered in water, right? Like, would right. I have been covered? Right. And we found out through that process that we were actually lacking on some of our insurance because we didn't have certain items named as individually insured. Right. And that was a whole other thing where I was like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa time out. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do you determine like what you need to insure separately or in addition to, or I'm assuming this is why you want your insurance guide to actually like come out and visit you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And to see what your setup is and what's around you. Yeah. And you're saying that I had a perfect, uh, it's a very similar situation where, um, my client is in a strip shopping center. I don't know. There's six, maybe six or eight stores in the shopping center. And one of the other stores received a, a ship, a, a packet at the end of their work day. And the, the delivery guy brings in this big box and they said, oh, just throw it over there in the back, right? He puts it down, everybody, goodbye. They sign for it, you know, done. They're finishing up and they go out for Friday night. They leave, mm -hmm. right? Well, where did he put it? He put it next to their gas hot water heater. <laughs> Nobody bothered to pay attention to that. Well, it caught fire overnight and sent smoke and fire and fire trucks come and shooting water all over. Well, everybody in this, in the shopping center now has damages. Right. So who do they go to? Well, the owner has their insurance on the building, but everybody's, everybody's insurance company is then going to turn around and go back to the guy who had the package next to his hot water heater and say, Hey, it's your liability, but right. you know, so wow. Yeah. Like, so did like, you have, wow. did you have the right liability coverage? Did somebody pay attention to your policy? So like as standard might come with just $50,000 in coverage for that. Right. So really, I mean, I've always known insurance was a jungle and like a maze or whatever you want to call it, but like every little detail ends up mattering, like yeah. for, to get the right coverage. And, you know, I always say. My attorney's job is to make sure I don't get into trouble. Uh, my insurance agent's guy's job is to make sure I'm covered when it happens. Okay. So like, I always talk to both, right? That's just, and once you've been 10 years, 15 years in business and you had stuff go wrong, yeah. you're kind of forced to learn that lesson, <laughs> yeah. but it's like one of those, you know crap I wish someone told me when I started my business is, is have a good relationship with a local insurance guy that actually will come out and see what you're doing and make sure you're properly covered. Someone that would be willing to sit down with you and your attorney and review your contract and say, okay, here, here's some, here's some holes, right? Right. Like this, we need to pluck. Yeah. But I think it's and attorneys don't necessarily understand insurance. I mean, I have a lot of attorneys that I know and work with, and they'll send me a contract to say, Hey, this is what it says about insurance. Is this, yes. is this something you can get? And it's like, no, somebody copied a, a an insurance clause out of a contract <laughs> that was 30 years old. And no, those, those, that terminology doesn't exist anymore. And I help them with what the current ter terminology is and they review it again and do whatever they need to do with it. But I just tell them what you know, insurance terminology is, but yeah. So as a startup or as someone that's getting into business, we look at insurance numbers. We go, oh my God, I can't afford this. Will you, or will most independent agents work with someone on what I would call like a scalable insurance, meaning listen, yeah. he, here's where you need to start. Like these are the bare minimums that'll give you the best coverage. But once you hit th these milestones, you really should look at adding these things to your insurance. Yeah, absolutely. I do that all the time. Yeah. With folks and just say, Hey, look, this is what you need to get up and running. You know, I have folks that buy franchises all the time and it's like, okay, what do you need to get up and running? Well, he's going to spend six months with no employees and no customers in there. And what do you need? Well, let's just get a stripped down policy for that. Here's what it's going to be when you're fully up and running, but let's get this other policy in 
it, you know, you don't need workers compensation when you don't have employees, you know? So let's, let's worry about that later. Let's just get you into the space and get your stuff covered that's in the space. And while you're doing renovations, you're covered for liability. And then we'll, you know, then we'll scale up to the other coverages that you need when you need them. Okay. So last question. Um, and this is something that kind of always intrigued me and I honestly don't know the answer. So we know there's a ton of sellers right now that are middlemen or drop shippers. Like they sell on Amazon, it ships from a drop house or they're selling digital products or they do affiliate type marketing or they, they basically aren't in control of the actual product itself. They are just the middlemen that kind of, they're almost like marketers. They middleman the transaction, but they aren't involved in the process. I would be willing to put money on that. A lot of those types of entities don't have insurance. Should they have insurance? And if so, what would be the absolute minimum they should have? Yeah. I, I, and, and it's hard to say and it, what they should have, but yeah, I mean, definitely you've got to have general liability, right? Because again, it goes back to the situation of what if I get sued, right? So, but it's not my product. Yeah, but you sold it to me. You know, I, I didn't make this. Right. But when it fell over and caused the fire or, you know, hurt somebody, whatever, it's not my fault that it fell over. It's the manufacturers or, you know, but as an attorney for the guy, the, the attorney for the person that you got go hurt, after the seller first. Yeah. They're going to go up there, everybody. Right. And you're included and defend yourself. And again, it's that, you know, why don't I feel like I won? <laughs> right. Yeah. Because I, I, got I still got the bill. bill from the attorney, yeah. right? And why not have a, you know. Three, four, five hundred dollar so, liability policy instead of a, you know, thirty thousand dollar bill. Correct. So, basically, what it boils down to is like, if you are in any type of business, no matter what it is, you should at least talk to someone that does business insurance and kind of get a few. Yeah. Like, what what's the bare minimum well, that I could get away with? And right? what we'll Nothing do, else. like what I'll do, and I think many independent agents will do is have conversations about other things too. So what are you doing at like cyber liability causes you like here, just answer these questions. What right. are you doing with your computers? Are you updating them? Are you, you know, are you installing the patches and the updates and the, you know, are you backing up your computer or, you, you know, like none of that has anything to do with insurance, but right. I'm making sure that you're doing those kind of things that. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're a small business, even if you're a sole proprietor and you get hacked and customer data gets leaked or, right. or um, it doesn't have to be or enough. just it or like ransomware where somebody takes over your computer yep. and says, you, you know, can't, you can't do your work for two weeks or a week or yeah, five yeah, days pay or, them Santa or, or a thousand dollars. But wait, right. if I have a backup, like I can get around that, right. I can start working again. So really proper insurance agents, as I'm going to call them, um, will do more than just write a policy. They'll actually get to know you. They'll get to know your business and kind of help you figure out like, what do you really need? Like not what, what would we like to sell you? Right, <laughs> right? right. And not 15 minutes could save you whatever, yeah. <laughs> but it's actually like, yeah, 15 minutes could get you properly covered. How about that one? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for coming in. My and pleasure. I, I'll, well, I'll bring you back to talk yeah. about some other stuff too, but. <laughs> oh, the uh, scary thing. Uh, yeah. But uh, thanks a lot and we will see you soon. Thank you.